friends and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to be reviewing and building the 71 Boss 351 Mustang from Ravel. I want to thank my friends over at Ravel for sending this into the channel for review and I'm really looking forward to building this one. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a big Mustang fan and this is a classic Mustang. This is a new kit from Ravel with all new tooling, so I'm really interested to break into this and see how it looks. Before we get started, I'd like to say thank you to all my current subscribers for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button down below and click on the bell so you get notified every time I upload new content. Also, be sure to check out the links in the description below and my online shop with all kinds of scale model themed merchandise, all designed by me, the Scale Modeler. All right, so without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open and check out what's inside. Okay, first off, this box is packed full of plastic. Now that's what I like to see. Okay, first we have the clear parts, which are very clean and very nicely molded. There's a little bit of distortion right here. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, but otherwise everything else looks great. Okay, next up we have the front end of the car and that is really well molded. We also have the lower pan for the front end and looks like our side view mirrors. On the next sprue, we have the floor pan and the subframe. Really nice detail on that, very crisp. Here we've got our springs, rear leaf springs, our rear end, and that looks like about that, maybe a license plate frame right there, but really nicely molded, very nicely done. On the next sprue, we have some wheel backs, our center console, steering wheel, uh, not sure what that is, our pedal assembly, drive shaft, sway bar, rear end, and a battery. On this sprue, we've got our dash, our radiator parts, front suspension, front uh, subframe assembly, firewall, and yeah, oh, horns, look at those. Can you see those? A couple of horns, how nice. All right, so far, real, real good. Oh, look, here we got a master cylinder even. Very nice. Okay, next up we have the hood, and that is really nice looking. Very clean. You even got some detail underneath the hood. The vents are cut out, so they're actually already cut out. We don't have to cut those out. And some hood locks are already set up there. Next, we've got our rear end, our rear fascia. I guess it'll be this way. Um, looks like we've got some exhaust pipes, rear bumper, or what goes underneath the rear bumper, I should say. Uh, this looks like our air dam for the front and our spoiler for the back. And these, I believe, are to hold the rear spoiler onto the deck. Next we have, okay, we got air cleaner, fan, distributor, intake manifold, more exhaust, water pump, carb, wow, nicely detailed carburetor, uh, cylinder heads, uh, timing cover, exhaust manifolds, belt assembly, engine halves, very nicely molded, valve covers, starter, cooling hoses. Yeah, these are really nicely molded parts. On this sprue, we've got our seat fronts and backs, our interior door panels. Wow, those are really nice looking. Our floor pan for the interior with our rear seat. Exhaust and muffler parts. Oh, sun, sun visors, that's great. Yeah, these are looking really good. All right, and then we have the body, which is the last of our white plastic parts. Very nicely molded fresh air vents up here on the top of the firewall. There's a couple little mold lines here, but really not much. Those will get knocked out really quick and easy. Very nice, no warpage. Look at that. Right on. All right, now for our chrome parts. The wheels look really nice. And I like how they made the mounting points for where the plastic is injected. They made it at a point where you don't have to trim off that and clean it up and remove the chrome that's gonna be seen. I may actually just leave these wheels chrome and then just uh, soften them up a little bit and detail them with a wash. Those look really nice. 
Okay, and this is our last piece of chrome. Not a lot of chrome in this kit, but that's okay. So we've got our bumpers, front and rear. Uh, looks like the, the gas tank cover for the rear, the hood locks, rear view mirror, and a chrome shifter. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. See how the shifter mount point, the bottom one's fine, but the top one is right on the ball. So when you clip this off and clean up that handle, you're gonna have to touch up the chrome. I'm probably gonna unchrome some of this and rechrome it myself. That's just how I like to do mine, but you can do yours any way you want. Next, we've got a set of nice tires. They are not branded, but they've got some really good tread on them. All right, next we have our decals. All right. So the decals look very nice and crisp. It's got the license plate with the pony on it. It's nice. We got some gauge decals, engine decals, center console decals, some additional, de some hearse decals. Um, and then our stripes. So you've got an option of using the silver or the black stripes. I'm not sure which color I'm gonna go with yet, but they all look very nicely done. We've got some uh, white wall letters for the tires there. Nice looking set of decals. Okay, next we have our instruction booklet and it's a booklet. These are new instructions. Like I said, this is an all new tool. Okay, here we've got a parts list with all the parts that are in the kit more parts detail, and then finally the assembly instructions. So again, these instructions look very clear, and very easy to read. Okay, and then we've got uh, on the back, we've got the callouts for more colors and also where the decals are gonna go. It even looks like it has a template for the hood so you can do that blacked out portion of the hood. That's really neat. And look at this, I didn't notice these in the parts, but the hood hinges actually look like hood hinges. I like that, very nice. All right, so, so far a great looking kit from Ravel. So once again, thanks for sending it into the channel for a review. I'm gonna clear off the bench, grab some tools and some paint and some glue and get to the build. Since this is a brand new kit with all new tooling, I'm not cutting at any slack. All of the parts should be well molded, no flash, and have proper fit. So far, so good. I'm really impressed with the parts, how well they're molded. They need very little cleanup and they seem to be going together really well.
The body on this kit is also molded really well. There is only a little bit of cleanup needed and there are some faint mold lines along the edges but those will be cleaned up really quickly. To clean up these mold lines I'm highlighting them with a black sharpie and then I will sand them down and once the sharpie marks are gone then I know I've got the mold line sanded away. After that it's just a matter of polishing it out and making it smooth. Now that the body prep is all done, I'm going to give everything a nice coat of light gray primer.
I really like the level of detail they've added to this engine. With the addition of the very well printed decals, it just really takes it to a next level. You will have to apply some of these decals during the build process. If you wait until the end, you just may not be able to get in there to apply the decals. I am using some black and gray panel line wash on areas of the engine. This will help bring out even more of the nice detail that they've molded into this kit. After the panel line wash is dried, I'll use some odorless turpentine to wash off the excess and make it look a little more realistic.
The decals in this kit are really nice. They're very pliable, they went on well, they didn't tear, rip, or crinkle. Some of them are a little challenging to apply, however, just be patient and take your time and you should get through it just fine.
achieve the wood grain look on the steering wheel, I started off by painting it orange. Then I added a black wash, let it dry, and lightly cleaned it with some odorless turpentine. Next, I'll use a brown wash and again lightly clean it and then you get a nice wood looking steering wheel. To detail the wheels on this kit, I'm just using some black panel line wash. I'll wipe the excess off with a cotton swab and this will give them a more realistic look. To give the tires a more realistic look, I'm using a power drill and a socket to spin the tire while I sand down the tread area, just enough to rough it up.
tires in this kit are pretty stiff, so to mount them on the wheels I used an old trick. I just heated up some water through my coffee pot and let the tires soak in it for a few minutes. This will soften them up so they're easily put on the rim.
We're back friends and here we have the completed Boss 351 Mustang from Ravel. This kit is really nice. Again, it's an all new kit, all new tooling, and you can really tell. The details, the mold quality, the parts count, everything about it is just really nicely done. I had no flash at all, very little cleanup on the parts, mainly where you take them off the sprue, and that was it. Otherwise, this kit just went together no problem. It is so nice to have a new modern kit from Ravel, especially one of this Mustang. It, there are so many models of similar Mustangs out there, but this is by far the best I've seen. Now this model did take me a lot longer to build than normal, but it had nothing to do with the model kit. It actually had to do with the paint. I used this Tamiya's PS8 light green paint for the body, and I don't know what happened, but it went on initially great, and then when I came back later to check on it, everything had wrinkled up. So I tried sanding it and I ended up having to put the body in a chemical bath basically for over a week to get all of the paint off. And I think the reason it took so long to get the paint off is because I really did a good job priming and prepping the body and everything just stuck like it should. Unfortunately, the paint got wrinkled and I don't know if it was humidity in the air or something maybe this is an old can of paint, I don't know. All I know is it did not turn out well the first time. After cleaning everything up and repriming, the second time it went on better, but it just does not look the way I wanted it. And that's fine, that's part of building models. Sometimes when you paint something, it doesn't come out right. That's just part of the game. However, overall, I am happy with the final build. It does look good. Everything went together again great. The decals on this kit are amazing. There's a lot of long decals for the body lines. They didn't wrinkle, they didn't tear. Uh, they just went on great. The decals are really well done, really well laid out, and just really good quality. I also really appreciated all of the extra decals for the engine, the engine bay, the interior. All those also went on without a problem and they look great and they really take this up to the next level. Now I know this is a level 4 kit, however, I would suggest this kit to even a moderate builder who's got maybe a dozen or so builds under their belt because the kit is so well designed it really goes together nicely. Also for more advanced modelers out there, this kit would be awesome to super detail and really, you know, modify and customize and all that. This kit would be great for that. So once again, thank you Ravel for sending this into the channel. You guys did a great job with this kit. Thank you so very much. If you'd like to pick up one of these for your own, there are links in the description. There should be a QR code somewhere around the screen here where you can scan it with your cell phone and go right to a site where you can purchase one of these. And if you are interested, I highly suggest this kit. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. It really helps the channel and I'd really appreciate it. So until next time, friends, as always, be safe out there. Have a great day and go build something.